Now we know the devil comes along and sows a bunch of stuff, but we cast that away and we only receive the word of the Lord. And we thank you that our garden is going to bloom and we're going to bear much fruit because the seed is good and the ground is good because you have done that work cultivating this ground. Getting all those roots and all of that old Adam stuff out. And now, Lord, your seed has room to grow and we become what you want us to become by your doings, and we thank you for it now, in Jesus' name, amen. <clears throat> when you read the book of Ephesians, and the first uh, scripture we'll have on the board tonight will be uh, Ephesians chapter two, verse six. Three things when you read the book of Ephesians, you can remember it like this, sit, <coughs> excuse me, sit, walk, and stand. That's what you'll find in the book of Ephesians. Sit. Seated with Christ in the heavenly places, walking down here on the earth by his power and standing against principalities and powers. Sit, walk, and stand. And this is what you will find in your life that we all have to learn to do. So let's read this. And he raised us up. <coughs> Excuse me. I want you to look at that. He raised us up. So you'll see all through the scripture, God, God, God. He raised us up together. That's where the rubber meets the road right there. Together. Notice, with him. You know, sometimes we can get selfish. I'll just take all of Jesus and myself and just leave you out. <laughs> you ever felt like that? Are you out there? Yes, uh, I just want to know now. I want you to see that picture, you see? Uh, I'll just take all of Jesus and myself and... No, 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 I want you to see something here. There's a lot of people in the church has to under, understand that we have to go walk through this thing together. He has raised us up together with him and made us, made us sit. Well, I don't want to say it. I want to do something. No, sit. You start out in your Christian life seated with Christ in heavenly places. There's a rest. There's your rest right there. And until Christians can realize they are seated with Christ in heavenly places and there is a rest. When you sit down, are you resting? He, no, she's not standing up. Neither of you are. You all are resting. You're seated. So there's a rest in Christianity, but so many times we start out walking and we fail. You gotta to learn to sit with Christ first in heavenly places. Now there's a spiritual principle here that you have to understand. Let's read that again. And he raised us up together with him and made us sit down together. <laughs> uh, <coughs> I hope I don't give you my cold. If you want it, I will. <laughs> I, don't, I don't want it. Whether you like it or not, Willie, we're together, buddy. <laughs> yes, sir. Yes, sir. <laughs> you know, sometimes we stake one another. But you know what's holding us together? Love. Love one another as he has loved us. <clears throat> how, many time, how many times do you like to get away from that particular brother or sister? <laughs> Don't lie to your pastor. You'd like to get as far as you could for some folk. Well, we all experience that. But I'm, 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 I'm painting the picture here that, that we got to go with this thing together. We're a team. We're, we are his body. All of us are members of one body. There ain't no thing called Baptist or Pentecostal, nothing like that. All one body. Not this way. And he raised us up together with him and made us sit together, joining, giving us joint seating with him. Can we grab that? You seated with Christ. 
joint seating. Did you know that God loves us as much as he loves Jesus? Yes. Yes. You see, that's got to break through. See, see, when these truths break through, our spirit gets liberated. Yes. And the devil can't just, just crush us all the time. Because we ain't putting up with that stuff anymore. We know who we are in Christ. We have a new identification. Yes. <coughs> We're seated with Christ in heavenly places. So many Christians start out walking. No. Get grounded in him. Know that we're seated together with him in heavenly places. Because, see, that's a rest. There's a rest. You rest first. And then you begin to walk. Look what it says. Join seating with him in the heavenly spree by virtue of our being in Christ. Just like all of us here in this building right here. We're all in this building together. We're all in Christ together. That's why the church, don't, we don't talk about people. We don't talk about our brothers and sisters in the Lord in a negative way. You're part of me and I'm part of you. Now, there's, there's times when, when leadership has to discipline some of the sheep at times. That's part of my job. But I'm talking about all of us together. We are one in Christ. And that's what it says. By virtue of, of our being in Christ Jesus, the Messiah, the anointed one. <clears throat> How many love me tonight? Let me check that out and see. <laughs> if you do something bad, would you tell on yourself? Every, all right, let me, uh, show me by either doing this or doing this. How many would tell on yourself? Come on, let's see. Huh? No, you wouldn't tell on yourself. I know human, you, I wouldn't tell on myself. Shh, yeah, don't you tell on me either. How many have ever heard of Adam and Eve? So you know that you've grown a little bit when you don't blame others for your mistakes. It seemed like Adam blamed can you imagine that he blamed his wife? I was telling these guys a little joke while ago. I think it might be a good idea to put it in right here. This couple was in the, in, in the bank. And this robber comes in with a mask. He sticks everybody up. And he says, nobody can see my face. If you see my face, I'd have to shoot you. And some man grabbed his uh, mask and tore it off of him. And he shot the guy. Bang, bang, bang. He put the mask back on. And then he said, did, did anybody else see me? <laughs> and this man raised his hand and said, I think my wife did. <laughs> <laughs> Lord, forgive me, Father. <laughs> but sometimes I see Christians like that. Oh my goodness. I didn't hear him, but I'm sure it was good. Frank said it is good. It's not all about me, it's about us. God took us all and put us all in Christ and made us sit together. I remember our girls when they... Uh, 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 was growing up and uh, they would get in little spats, you know, and we sort of made them hug each other and, 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 and forgive one another, you know, and they didn't want to do it. Well, it was her fault, Daddy. Yeah, I know. Yeah, but, all, but you see, you're in this family and, and you're sisters and, and you got to learn to live together and, and God has brought you together in this family and, and you're going to love one another. Because don't make me take my belt off. Because every time I do that, my pants fall down. 
See, we, we spanked our children. My daddy spanked me. How many's ever had a good spanking? Maybe we can arrange that if you haven't had one lately. <laughs> and I might need one. Put it on me. But take the spurs out of that belt, though, you know. But notice, if the church could see that, I'm talking about the church universal now here. You know, when I say church, Sure, collectively we have to see it here, but we have to see the church everywhere. That's why, that's why when, when people over there are, are losing their lives, it affects me, it hurts me. When I see a Christian uh, over there suffering, because the Bible says when one suffers, we all suffer. We are part of one another, okay? And we're to help each other along the way. Now let's go to that next scripture, verse 7. <clears throat> Notice this now. There's a, re- there's a lot of reasons that he does this. He, he did this. He did what? God did this. What is this? Verse 6. Can you see that? He did this that he might clearly demonstrate through the ages to come the immeasurable, limitless, surpassing riches of his free grace, his unmerited favor in his kindness and goodness of heart towards us in Christ Jesus. (coughs) No partiality (coughs) whatsoever. Now there are those in the church that are in leadership and there are those under leadership. We've got to remember, how many do you understand that? I taught that not too long ago. <clears throat> there are those that God has put in authority, and there are those that are under authority. Now, all of us are under authority. If I do something that, 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 is, that is not right, how many know how to get hold of my pastor? All right, one, two, three, four. All right, he lives right there in St. Stephen's. He's 86 years old, but make sure you've got a good reason to talk. Because <laughs> you might come back on the, in the ambulance. Because <laughs> I've had a few of them go up there, you know. He called me on the carpet. I said, please don't beat me no more. I can't stand it no more. <laughs> them sheep are beating me to death, man. But you see, I take it from the Lord. That's the Lord. How I many remember the man that comes out of the bushes and he curses David? How I many remembers that uh, in Samuel? I like that. His, body, his bodyguard said, <coughs> you, you want me to run him through, Dave, brother Dave? <laughs> and Dave said, no, that, that, that's from the Lord. That, that's, that's good. See, that's part of discipline. I've had people curse me out and not say, thank you, Lord. See, you, you're not going to be able to do that unless you've grown up a little bit. See, you'll be, we'll be tested. You'll be tested. Boy, have I been tested. You ever seen them stripes on my back? Put my shirt up here. Sure. <laughs> He did this that he might clearly demonstrate through the ages to come the unmeasurable, limitless, surpassing riches of his free grace, his, his unmerited favor and his kindness and goodness of heart towards us in Christ Jesus. No partiality. He put us all in Christ. We're all one body. We all have different gifts. We have different talents. We have different places of, of leadership, different places of service. But we're all in his family. We have one father, one faith, one baptism that baptizes us all into one body, Jesus Christ. No partiality whatsoever. All right, go to the next verse now. Time's going by fast. Verse 8. For it is by free grace, God's unmerited favor, that you are saved. Period. You know, it's so important to understand that 
Paul talks about different gospels in the book of Galatians. Have you ever read, ever read the book of Galatians and he talks about different gospels? You mean there's other gospels out there? Yeah. But he shared the gospel that God gave him, Jesus Christ gave to him. Death, burial, and resurrection. Death, burial, and resurrection. Yeah, but you got to be baptized by our bishop or you ain't saved. Or you got to be baptized by our church or you, or you ain't saved. That's another gospel. Now you'll find that all in the scriptures. You'll find that in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 1, 2, and 3. If you want to write it down, he talks about, about that. So there's one gospel that brings us into the kingdom of God. And that's what Paul says, I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ that he gave me, the resurrected Lord gave me. See, <clears throat> as the church progressively moved along, it took a long while before a lot of the Jewish tr traditions and rituals and, and things that they did in the Old Testament had to be weeded out. It was 70 AD before the, uh, the temple was destroyed. So they were still practicing a lot of the Jewish uh, customs, which were not necessary for salvation. Okay? And so Paul had to really, really uh, stand his ground. And he went, if you read uh, Acts 15, that was when he went to the council there. <coughs> and they settled it all, finally settled it all down. That the Gentiles did, ha did not have to be circumcised, did not have to keep Moses' law to be saved. No, for it is by free grace, God un God's unmerited favor, that you are saved. Period. Now you'll have to watch out for that as you uh, go along. If, if the Lord takes me home, uh, you've got to remember that because you have, might have some other preachers might preach something else to you. That's another gospel. In fact, you know what Paul said? If anybody preaches any other gospel, let him be what? Cursed. Cursed. That's how strong he was on that. Delivered from judgment. We will never stand at the great white throne judgment. That's for the sinners. Those that reject Christ will stand at the end of the trip, at the end of the millennium years at the great white throne. Our judgment will be for works, for, for rewards. And that's found in uh, First Corinthians, no, I'm sorry, Second Corinthians 5. In fact, let's turn there, I'll show you there, just turn there. Excuse me, Second <clears throat> Corinthians 5.10, I think it is. Yeah, put that on the board. And then we'll come back to that, finish that. Are you ready? For we must all appear, who's, who's all? All us Christians. Appear and be revealed as we are before the judgment seat of Christ. Everything will be exposed. Now this is called the judgment seat of Christ. So that each one may receive his pay. According to what he has done in the body. Notice this. Whether good or evil. Whether good or evil. <coughs> so that indicates that uh, there evidently we'll be doing, we'll be doing some th evil things along the way. And uh, we'll be judged. Now, that ain't going to send us to hell. Because, believe me, if you make it to this judgment, that's good. You, you know you're all, you know, okay. Notice, according to what he has done in this body, in this here body. Now, here's the thing about it. I, I've meditated on, well, what would be evil? What would we do evil? Uh, sometimes we might do things just for our glory. Now, that would be evil in the eyes of God. How many of you understand that? Hmm? Yeah. We say, well, that's good. Well, it may be good in our eyes, but it may be evil in God's eyes. Okay, now, we won't get too, too embedded in that tonight, but just keep that in mind that we want to make sure that we are motivated by love and, and we are, what we are doing, we're doing uh, by following the Holy Spirit and he is directing us and guiding us along the way. Our purpose now, and motives have been. 
considering what his so what purpose, is our purpose of being here tonight? What is our motives for being here tonight? And what he has achieved, been busy with. And all of us are, uh, have been busy with some things that really don't uh, build the kingdom of God. So God would count that, I would think, as evil. But God is a good God. And, he, you know, you have to take care of your family. You've got to take care of your house. You've got to mow the grass once a year. Or is it twice a year? God understands all that. And what he has achieved, be, been busy with and given himself and his attention to accomplishing. All right, let's go back to Ephesians now. And we're not getting very far, but we're talking about being seated with Christ right now and walking and, and seated, walking and standing. Ephesians, Ephesians, Ephesians 2. Okay, let's see if we can't move around here pretty fast. Okay, let's finish that. <coughs> Notice this, Ephesians 2. For it is by free grace, God's unmerited favor, that you are saved, delivered from judgment, and made partakers of Christ's salvation through your faith. Remember, Beginning to end is by faith. By faith. All the way, 100%, by faith. And this salvation is not of yourselves. Of your own doing. It, can, it came not through your own striving. How many in here, when you got first saved, you just strive all the time? Let me see your hand besides me. I was the most striving person in the world. But you know, you see, we're talking about that rest now. We have to learn to come into that rest. Then we begin to walk and talk and then stand against the enemy. So, and this salvation is not of yourselves, of your own doing. It came not through your own striving. But it is the gift of God. Okay, now let me just ask a few questions here. <clears throat> Let's just say that, that, that uh, I'll use myself, keep, keep out of trouble that way. Let's say I was real bad today. Uh, did, 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 does God still love me when I'm bad? Yes. How many in here loves your children when they're bad? That's real love. Come to think of it, while we were yet sinners, while we were bad, that's when Christ died for us. See, we just have to watch our thinking sometimes. And, 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 and I don't know all the time where the balance is. I wish I did. <clears throat> but God knows my heart. And there's times that uh, I think there's times when God really teaches a, us a lot when we're bad. Now, here's what I learned when I'm bad. God, thank you for 1 John 1, 9. I'm going to just stop think now. I want you to think that through. Suppose you just made mistakes and sin and sin day after day, month after month, and never get washed with the blood. Never get forgive, forgiven. You'd be so heavy tonight, you'd probably break the chair you're sitting in. God has provided forgiveness. Now, what I'm saying is, do you appreciate forgiveness? Let me see your hands. That's good. Thank you, Jesus. Because you see, now, <clears throat> I'm going to ask you a question. And this is for me too. Do you forgive others as, as Christ forgave you? Some of you are not even moving your eyeballs. Are you <laughs> See, I'm putting you to the test tonight as your shepherd. 
Oh, there's times you want to wring their neck. How many of you ever felt like that? If I could just, you know, spend about 10 minutes in the back room with this, you know, just. Uh, and I stop and think, gosh. God has forgiven me of all my trespasses and sins. And for me not to forgive others. But what happens if you don't forgive those that trespass against you? That's right. God won't forgive us. That's bad. Well, now we can argue with God if we want to, but you ain't going to gain no ground that way. How many has ever been through that test, what I just said? You know, how many still sends people to the moon? Let me see your hands. <laughs> yeah. Linda says a few times. Frank spent a few times up there, a few times on the moon. I've, I've spent a lot of times on the moon. <laughs> Can I come home now, Susan? <laughs> How many love me tonight? Come on now, let's loosen up. Don't be, don't be stiff on me tonight. Loosen up. I'm trying to get you to loosen. I want you to see God's grace, God's mercy. Notice he's delivered us. And we are partakers of Christ's salvation that he provided for us. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Oh, not through our own striving, but it is the gift of God. I want to turn over now to Romans 5. Turn 517. 517. That's Romans. I know I'm skipping around, but uh, just seeing these verses of Scripture will help you out. Five seventeen. All right, look at it on the board. For if because of one man's trespass, lapse, offense, death reigned through that one, much more surely will those who receive God's overflowing grace. Now notice, receive it, receive it. And the free gift of righteousness putting them into right standing with himself, reign as kings, reign as kings in life through the one man, Jesus Christ, the Messiah, the anointed one. Now, <coughs> if you think you're going to correct everything you see around you, you're going to be a busy person all your life. The reigning will be inside Many times the reigning will be your ability and my ability to turn it loose. To turn it loose. I'm going to say that again, turn it loose. Do you need to turn anything loose tonight? Like a bad attitude? A bad feeling towards somebody? Whatever. Whatever. Turn it loose and forgive. Now that's reigning and ruling. Everything ain't going to be perfect all around you. I like it for it to be that way. Got news for you. Most of us have been around long enough. It ain't that way. Boy, have I had to turn my children loose. I've had to turn my grandchildren loose. I've had to turn my great-grandchildren loose. I've had to turn my, a lot of the sheep loose. I mean, understand what I'm talking about. Yes. Now, if you're holding on to something tonight, have you ever seen a vibrator, a, a machine? Is, they got vibrator machines down there where you exercise, you get a thing, just vibrate you. How many of you know you just keep holding on and you're just going to be like this? Now, how are you going to stop shaking? Turn it loose. Amen. Turn it loose. See, those are things we have to learn. Because you can't correct everything that's, that's bad around you. Because you're going to be a miserable person trying to correct everything. In fact, how are you doing in correcting yourself? Oops. <laughs> that's a hard one, isn't it? But see, God has given us, I want you to see that. He's given us what? Notice there's two things that he's given us. 
Overflowing grace and the gift of righteousness. Overflowing grace. I don't care how bad it is, he's given us that overflowing grace to reign in life. The kingdom, man's kingdom can be shaken, shaken and shaken, but the kingdom of God in us cannot be shaken. So sometimes you have to turn the world loose. When I think of some of the mistakes that our president makes, some of the things that he says, don't do that. <laughs> I mean, I've been around a long time. Some of you folks look like you've been around for a long time too. Yeah. Just because I'm looking at you, I'm not saying that you know, you, you, you're that old. During the, Viet, during the Vietnam War, Man, it's like I got so involved in that thing and, and, and uh, you know, they're killing our boys left and right. And I mean, you understand, I got involved emotionally in that thing. And God said, turn it loose, Bob. I turned it all, had to turn it loose. And it was a struggle, but I turned it loose and got free. You have to turn things loose to get free yourself. There's a lot of things you, that you see in this world you might think, well, that's not justice, that's not right. That should not happen. That's right, but we're in a world that's controlled by the enemy. You know who the God of this world is? Satan. He stole it from Adam. So to keep yourself in that ability to reign and rule, you've got to keep the inside of yourself free. You let that thing come in on you. How many people I've worked with over the years. My husband. Have you got a husband? Yeah. But he bugs me. I got news for you. Until you get rid of that bug in you. His, the bug that's in him is going to bug you. How many of you understand? Boy, when I learned that truth, you know, and the thing about it is you hold on to this and you hold on to that. Now you're mad at this person. You're mad at the preacher. You, oh, he should have done this. He, why did he do that? And you're mad at him and you're mad at uh, your next door neighbor and you're mad at the grocery store guy down there and you're mad at yourself. That ain't reigning and ruling. God's never given us that abundance of grace and the gift of righteousness. no. That means when you reign and rule, you keep this kingdom inside of here free. Amen. Oh, you don't have to like it, but you don't let it rule over you. You rule over it by not allowing it to rule over you on the inside. Amen. Okay? That's why a lot of people are sick, emotionally sick, mentally sick. <coughs> I had a man in this church. <clears throat> I loved him very much. He committed suicide about five months ago. <clears throat> if I mentioned his name, some of you would know him. <clears throat> he said everything he could about me. I mean, the devil got in him, and he would write letters to me telling me how bad of a pastor I was. I mean, for one year he'd done that. On the phone, I have, I think there's 17, you can call my house 17 times and put it on the, on the, inter, on the uh, answering service, 17 times, he'd fill it up. So when I knew it was him, I'd just click, 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 and I'd bless him, I'd bless him. Now here's the scripture that I use right here. Uh, turn to 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 8 and 9. <clears throat> If you're going to keep yourself free, if you're going to reign and rule and, and, and stay seated with Christ in heavenly places. <clears throat> Excuse me, I'm sorry. But okay, fi finally, all of you should be of one and the same mind, united in spirit, sympathizing with one another, loving each other as brethren of one household, compassionate and courteous, tender hearted and humble. All right, check yourself. Now, when you read that, check, your, check yourself with that scripture. That's how you grow. And you say, hmm, hmm, <clears throat> I'm not very good there either. Huh? Well, so what are you going to do? 
to reign and rule, you're going to say, Father, I thank you that you're, doing, you're going to do that work in me. And I'm going to be the same mind, have, the, have, a, have a united spirit to everybody in this church. And I'm going to love people in this church. If you want to really find out if you got anything in you, uh, how many people deal with correction real good? Don't raise your hand. Not many of us. <laughs> None of us like to be corrected. Sometimes I have to do that and I look like I'm the bad guy from the north. I can tell you times that God corrected me and I thank God for that. So what type of spirit do we have? So when you read that, check that out. All right, let's go to the next verse. Never return evil for evil or insult for insult. Scolding, tongue lashing, berating. But on the contrary, blessings. So anybody that, that, that says anything, and what I did, I blessed that brother. I blessed that brother. I blessed that brother. I loved him. I gave him a chance to even to preach in this church. I loved him. I love him right now. He's gone. After a year, he called me, repenting. I blessed him for one solid year and got all the blessings he finally called me, crying, repenting. He said, Pastor Bob, I don't know why I said all of those things about you. Well, I did. How many in here know? The devil can put that stuff in your mind. And he obeyed the devil instead of God. If he had just blessed me, notice this. Now, I want you to, everybody to learn that because the next time somebody does you a little wrong, I am tired of getting, going up to the moon and getting those people back. <laughs> Don't send nobody else to the moon. <laughs> that's the closest planet. Anyway, you're not sending them to Mars. That's further away. Now, notice what it says there. Praying for their welfare, happiness. Can you say, somebody's cursing you? I've had people tell me to go to hell. I said, no, I'm not going to go to hell. Jesus saved me. I'm going to heaven. <laughs> Are you ready for that? Are you ready for that? <laughs> you know, when, when, you, when you do wrong, you always look for somebody to sympathize with you and get, get somebody on your side. You know what I mean? I mean, you know, that's the human element. Yes. And, and we've got to stop that. I've seen so many people do that. Notice... But on the contrary, blessings, praying for their welfare, happiness and protection, and truly pitying and loving them. For know that to this you have been called. To do what? To bless those that curse you. Pray for your enemies. Do you know that some of us are praying for the dictator in North Korea? Just think if, we can, if God will save him, how many lives will be saved? Because at some point, there's going to have to be some bad stuff that's going to happen. Lives are going to be out of here because there's going to be a war. We cannot allow that guy to get that uh, missiles and that atomic bomb because they're going to sink California. How many of you understand that? See, see, a little leaven, a leaven, a whole loaf. And if you don't deal with it here, down here, it will come out just about the time God is wanting a revival. And because you haven't gotten rid of that stuff inside of you, the devil will use you to quench the spirit. Somebody wave at me. Put that brick down back there. <laughs> a little leaven will leaven the whole loaf. You learn that scripture, put it on your mirror, and you start blessing everybody that you think's giving you a hard time. Look what it says now. Truly pitying and loving them, for know that to this you have been called, that you may yourself inherit a blessing from God. Amen. That you may attain a blessing as heirs, bringing welfare and happiness and protection to yourself. Because if we don't forgive others, it blocks God from forgiving us. That's very clear in the scriptures. I got a message on the internet that talks about healing through forgiveness. Healing through forgiveness. 
And sometimes you'd think, well, I've forgiven them, but if I tell you what, I ain't going to have nothing else to do with them. If he came to my house, he'd be starving to death. I wouldn't give him no bacon or nothing else. But I'd take my dog on him. But I love him. No, you don't. <laughs> but if you find yourself in that situation, repent. Fall on your knees and say, oh God, if you don't change me, I can't change myself. You can't change yourself and I can't change myself. That's why we got to let God do the work in us. Yes. Then we will do his will. That's a powerful verse of scripture there. All right, let's go back to, uh, we've got 10 more minutes yet. I think I want to go to Habakkuk 3, and I'm going to close on this one. Now, <coughs> excuse me. <coughs> wow. Habakkuk 3, 17. Everybody there, put it on the board. Are you there? Here we go. Everybody look at the board now. Let me give you a little history on Habakkuk. Habakkuk was, if I may use the word, teed off at God because God was allowing those heathen nations coming in to correct Israel. And we are your children and you're allowing all those, they're worse than we are. There'll be a day when God will correct the unbelievers. Jude 1, 14, I think it is. That's why he's coming back the second coming. To pass judgment on the unbelievers. But notice this. But, but Habakkuk had a, 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 something going on inside of him. And he was mad at God. And he couldn't understand why God was using some heathen nations to come in and, and, and take the Israelites off in slavery. He was teed off at God. Big time. But he came to his senses. And see, there'll be things in all of our lives that God will bring us to a point. It's called a breaking point. And that's when you get set free. It doesn't matter. You let it go. And you know God's a good God. He loves me. And if I die in this, heaven ain't too bad. I know you, some folks don't understand that type of language. You might not have been there. I've been there. It's okay, God, if you take me home. It's okay. Susan might not like it. See, that, that's got to happen with inside of us. That, that that old man has got to be broken to where, God, you are God. And if you think that, uh, that those heathen nations have to correct your people, who am I to lift my little head up and say, you can't do that. They're your people. See how foolish we can be sometimes? We're going to run to the rescue and mess the dealings of God up in a person's life. You see somebody that is being corrected by God, you just pray for them. Let God do his work. You've got to have that type of concernment, discernment and all. Notice what it says. Here's, here's what he came to. He finally came to this. Okay, you're God. Though the fig tree does not blossom and there is no fruit on the vines, though, our pro, though the product of the olive fails and the fields yield no food, though the flock is cut off from the foe and there are no cattle in the stalls, and you, we could put it like this. Though there's no food in the refrigerator, though I owe for the rent, the car won't run, my husband's in the hospital, the kids are going wild, put it in your little world. The right leg don't move like it should. <sighs> Y'all not there yet. Some of us are a little bit, you know. I'm like, uh, <laughs> like Rick, call 911. <laughs> The other day when I got up, I was thinking about what he was saying, and I was decision to call 911. I don't know about it. Okay. Notice, notice, all that bad stuff. Ain't got a dime in my pocket. Yet, I will rejoice in the Lord. I will exalt 
in the victorious God of my salvation. Brother, now you're free inside. Now you're free inside. You just broke. <coughs> you just broke the powers of hell over you. And go to the next verse now. I think it's another verse there. Verse 19. The Lord God is my strength. You know why I'm over here tonight? All day I've been saying the Lord is my strength. Like I get, This cold ain't quite out of my being yet. But I'm trusting God. Let the weak say they are strong. I am strong in the Lord. The Lord is my salvation. Whom shall I fear? My personal bravery. See, after a while, God becomes your everything. If you're not there, just, uh, just hear it. But, but that's where it'll bring you. And that's when you will have the victory inside of you like you've never seen before. Because I'm here to tell you, he does no harm. He does no wrong. He cannot lie. You come to know God in such a way. But see, that's the dealings of God in a man. Nothing you can produce, nothing you can do other than submit to his dealings in your life. And if it's correction, receive it and you'll be blessed. If he blesses you, receive it. I've seen some people, that don't even, they won't receive the blessings of God. Yeah. Let's see how, let's see. There's a hundred dollar bill there. Put that back in the, in the <laughs> so, 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 you know, some of some of you wouldn't receive a blessing. Look at that. I, I, I'm gonna bless now he won't receive it. You, you would no, you wouldn't. Hey ya! No, that's yours. You that's yours. Let's see if I, you got change for a dollar. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Woo! Uh -huh. hey, Let's see this hunter. Who, nobody back there needs any money. <laughs> Don't tell Susan I'm giving the money away. <laughs> now, you, they received that good. Now, suppose I had to correct them. How would they receive it? Probably run over and talk to so did you know what Pastor Bob been? And the other person, oh, is that right there? Let's go weed him up. How many love me? It's okay, church, I'm open. You can shoot me if you want. I'm free. I'm ready to go. You better love me. See, revengeance is mine, saith the Lord. When you trespass against God's anointing, you none of us have to fight. We don't have to fight. God will do it for you. You don't touch God's anointed. And we're all anointed. That's why God says pray. Pray for them. Bless them. Boy, when you learn that, and I, listen, I can tell you story after story. True stories. All right, let's finish this and we'll close. I got one minute. Here we go. He makes my feet like hinds feet. He will make me to walk, not to stand still in terror, but to walk and make spiritual progress upon my high places of trouble, suffering, or responsibility for the chief physician with my string instruments. God will turn it to good as we trust in the Lord. Everybody say, I'm strong in the Lord. I cast all my cares. I bless, I bless everybody, everybody, and everybody. everybody. I'm free, 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 free to love people and bless them. Now receive the blessings of God. Just receive the blessings of God. Thank you, Father, for the blessings of God right now. And we give you praise and glory in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. Turn to somebody.